Welcome our viewers, welcome back to S Class. Remember S Class social media show that runs on Facebook, YouTube and also other different platforms. So if you're looking for us, you can go on YouTube, look for S Class 256, still on Facebook, S Class 256. You can also look for our website which is sclass.online and you can share with us your inform your comments, tell us what you think about the different topics that we bring on board. So like we told you yesterday, we are still running this campaign with Af uh, Af uh, a code and also UNFPA that they are saying uh, peace and peace starts with you. They are saying youth for peace. So today here we have somebody from Wakiso is, is going to tell us about himself and where he works. Then after we are going to have a discussion about peace and see how best we can involve young people and also talk about peace in our country. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Briefly tell us about yourself, sir. Thank you. I'm Kwago Joel, a committee dormitory officer in Wakiso sub county. So I work in the communities, uh, I deal with youth, I deal with people with disabilities, I deal with women. So that's some of my background. So I'm a committed women officer. Committed officer. So Mr. Joe, when it comes to peace, we have seen very many topics that have been displayed inside there in the room. I'm talking about peace. Do you think it's very important to talk about peace when peace with youth? Yes, yeah, very important because peace is the major thing whereby in the communities we have to prevail. Once the communities are not peaceful, other developments will may not work out. So once we have peaceful communities, the communities, the members in the community will be developmental, all developments will be very successful. So it's very good and it's very important to have peaceful dialogues and meetings in the society. Since you are representing people of Wakiso, so far, what are some of the things that government has put in place in that young people, youth, keep, be, keep being peaceful in the communities? Yeah, um, local governments have put in structures and they have put in different uh, programs for the youth. And if I may tell you, uh, straight away from LC1, there are structures of youth, representative of youth up to the national level. So all those structures are well stipulated in the in policies and documents, laws. So all those structures is one of the things the government has put in place. So having put a LOC1 youth representative at an LOC1 is one of the setup. The other things whereby the government and local governments have implemented like the grants for the youth. Although some other outreaches for the youth. So the government and local governments, local councils, they have involved the youth in very many programs. For instance, when you look at the structure of a youth, it starts it starts right away from the what? From the local council one, local council two, local council three, four and then five up to the national national level. So in that case, in governance government has put in, in place. Second, there are other things like uh, involving youth in government programs whereby youth are engaged in activities of the government. For example, grants. For example, if they want support, there are very many programs for the youth. Uh, and you talked about structures and to bring me to this point, do youth really know that these structures are there and have, have you people put in more effort to make sure that people, youth know that these structures are there and you guys are there to support them? Yeah, youth are aware that these structures are there because they are the one who elect their representative right away from the, the, the LS1 level up to the national level. So awareness is being done on different followers that is the LS1 village meetings at the sub county council because at the sub county the representative of the youth, the, the youth councillor, it can be either female or male. And then if you go to the sub county student, is a chairperson for the youth. So all these dockets awareness can be raised among the community members, most especially the youth. And then now it's going to be, take me back. If you look at the way our country has been running, they say that very many youth are involving themselves into demonstration and burning tires, beating up people. And why are youth so much into these things of demonstration, according to your own observation? 
Uh, some of them, some of them were into these things because they are redundant. Some are, are not, they don't have that particular thing which are involving them to be active, to keep them busy. And during that, because this time we are in a COVID era, so many youths or children are home, redundant, they don't have anything to do. So they are not at school. It has also resulted them to, to be idle because they are, there is nothing which can make them of use at that particular time. So to go to the point whereby that why youth are involved in demonstration, there are very many factors which uh, drive those youth into demonstrations. It can be either unemployment, it can be either grievance among themselves, it can be either something you think of that these people like, for example, they don't have anything to share in common, eh? they resort into those demonstrations. But all those factors are brought into different many uh, points. So someone to go into demonstration, there is something behind which has driven him or her. But particularly, it can be uh, idleness and also need, something need to survive, or they need to survive. They are unemployed. So it's one of the things that can lead them to demonstrations. Okay, now we're talking about peace and how best you can maintain peace. So I'm going to chip in. Remember this has been brought to you by ACCORD and also UNFPA. They are promoting peace and they are saying youth for peace and they are saying stop the violence and demonstration. Youth need to involve themselves into something that are productive and put money into your pockets. The, then we, I, w I want him to tell us if you look at the way trainings are going on about peace here at Eureka. Do you think that you three need this kind of trainings of peace and how people, how they can maintain peace in themselves? Yeah, it's a very important initiative. I, I forward them to accord. I appreciate. These are some of the things our community need. And once we don't give them, things will turn astray. So once a partner has come up and like come up with this initiative, they involve the youth in peace building, peacemaking. It's one of the things we yearn for, even in the community. We personally, as lower local governments or Eros One Village, we cannot do a lot, but other partners can also help us. Being that very many youth are engaged in different uh, things which are maybe of insult, they do things of not performing very well. So bringing in a peaceful uh, 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 meeting or a dialogue, it impacts a lot. Why? That once youth are engaged in this meeting, they are made over, uh, there's a sense of awareness being made to them. Because most of them, they think, say that we are not aware, we are not aware. They don't reach to us to tell us this information regarding the youth. But still, we do sensitization, sensitization meeting, awareness raisings in the communities. But you may find a challenge that some youth, they don't turn up to these meetings. They don't turn up because they, 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 they expect something. They want to expect something out of that what? Meeting. So we, we, we play a very big role by encouraging the youth to come in meetings like this, whereby they can get more knowledge about their, how they can run their day-to-day -day life. For example, they can keep peace through very many ways. Keeping peace can be made through very many ways. So one of them is to be engaged in community meetings, village meetings. So this kind of awareness will help the youth grasp more concepts and how they can respond to various things in their communities. Since, since as you are winding up, what will be some of your words regarding peace building and the way you see our country? Where do you see our youth of our country in five years from now? Uh, I see that there will be a, a big mind change among the youth. The youth will be productive because once you don't teach someone something, they may not learn it. It's when you teach someone to, and when he learns. If you teach someone something, he will learn. But if you don't teach him or her, he cannot learn. 
So we've made very many teachings, we've taught them. So I think out of these teachings, out of these educations on peace, youth will change their mindset. And having changed their mindset, the development will be embraced, the employment will be exhibited, and also in, more, in other things like working together in harmony, it will be exhibited. Because most youth, they don't want to work, like I can't sure, they want white collar jobs. But once we, we enact them, the good things of keeping peace and we change their mindset, they will be very impressive in our societies. So I think in five years to come, their mindset will be changed and development will also prevail. That's what I think. So what will be your last words as we are winding up? Uh, for me, I last, my last word will be that I encourage youth to always be productive. Be productive, be very wise, and be exemplary. Because you cannot be exemplary, you cannot be very wise when you are not learned. When they call you for community meetings, you go there. When they call you for a developmental thing in the community, you go there. Listen, however much they will not pay you, you not get a, a refund, but you go there and then learn. It's when you will transfer that information to other people in the society. So I beg the youth always to come on board, never to think that the uh, informal, informal sector is a very bad thing, but you can achieve something out of the informal sector. And lastly, I would, encourage, I would like to encourage the youth to engage themselves in enterprise, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a way to go whereby you can make good uh, can make ends meet out of entrepreneurship so i encourage the youth to be more considerate in embracing entrepreneurship thank you thank you so much you have had a lot of his words and we are encouraging you every youth out there please maintain peace keep peace involve yourself into something productive that can put pocket into your can put put money into your pocket because all what you are earning for is money remember also go and attend these community meetings because these are some of the things that you need to involve yourself into planning for your village and also making sure that your country develop with also your knowledge be, be put into your knowledge into whatever they are doing so Embrace peace. If peace starts with you and also you're supposed to keep peace even when you have your wife at home, maintain peace. Talk with her well and also make sure that even your neighbor keeps peace. So peace starts with you. Like Accord is saying, remember this show is powered by Accord and we are still here having discussions with different people who are here for this G4G dialogue meeting, Generation for Generation dialogue meeting and they are saying Youth for Peace and peace starts with you. Thank you so much and it's still continuing.